Okay. All right. Sorry about that. I was just trying to figure out for with my track host where they had gone and everything, but uh, we're doing great. Uh, welcome to the continued community track here at ApacheCon at home. I uh, hope you're all enjoying your home like I am here with my collection behind me. Uh, we're here to talk about the Apache way, which we've talked about a number of times, but this is a little different talk and we'll see how that goes as we start. So welcome to my talk. Um, the Apache way is really a set of behaviors and practices that have been developed at the Apache Software Foundation. And they're really designed to promote long lived successful projects. And we do this by focusing on stable governance that people can understand and by encouraging new contributions. Because really the way any open source project lives is by having more contributors. That's really the lifeblood of any open source. So that's what the Apache way is really trying to do. And while these work for any sort of open source project, they are most important for Apache software projects because this is the expected behavior um, for any Apache project. So there are a lot of talks and you've heard some of this earlier yesterday in some other Apache way talks about uh, the history and about how we grew and how we made up the Apache way. But you know that's not really that interesting. Um, how much does history matter to a newcomer? How does history and the background really help someone figure out how they can start contributing into a project. So you want actionable information on what to do. And that's what I'm here to give you, hopefully. So if we go on to the Apache Way menu, here is my choice. Here's my list of things that we want to talk about. And since these are all different important aspects of the Apache Way, and since Apache Way, it's all about contributions. It's all about community over code. Usually I ask somebody else in the room when we're together in a room together to pick the next topic. But since we're all separately, I'm just going to pick what is the, the obvious next topic to talk about, which would be, of course, decision making. We need to make a decision. Let's learn how Apache people make decisions. If I can click on the right window. So decision making, how do we do it in Apache projects? Well, obviously, you've probably read this in a number of places, consensus is preferred. So consensus within a community is the best path forward. Um, it's not necessarily the perfection. It's not necessarily getting everything done all at once. It's going forward step by step. Is this new thing an improvement? Um, does it do something that somebody finds useful? Because there are a lot of times where a feature that I really want to put in, you may be like, eh, I don't care. Okay, but do you mind if I put it in? Is that okay? If you don't mind, then we have consensus, right? You don't care, I really want to. That's an important way to do it. And a, a formal thing we have at Apache Projects is lazy consensus, where someone will announce, I'm going to do this unless someone objects. And usually they, either nobody says anything or somebody says, hey, you should, maybe you should add something. Great, then that person can move forward and then the whole project moves forward. But sometimes, we do need votes. So there are a couple of different ways we use votes. One is voting as an official consensus. So when we make, or when a project management committee makes a formal release on behalf of half of the ASF, um, we have the PMC as a body of Apache formally vote to release that. That makes the software release an act of the foundation and therefore our legal shield applies to everything that's been done with it. Um, those are needed places. And sometimes we need to use votes to speed up consensus. Sometimes, you know, we have a hard problem and we some of the project really needs to move forward. In that case, you know, you should try to work on consensus, but if you need to, the PMC can call a vote and abide by the decisions of that vote. Now, importantly, when you're looking in different projects at Apache, some projects use votes for lots of things, which is great because that's how they've grown to uh, run their decisions. They've, they work with their whole community on that. Uh, some projects very, very rarely use votes. They use them for releases and for adding new committers. Um, but everything else is consensus. It's all up to the project because projects are independent in terms of how the general ways they decide how to do things. An important part of decisions is the timeline. And we don't have a 
timeline of how long things take. We have a timeline of the shortest possible decision cycle we can have, 72 hours. So whenever we're making a release or making a major code donation, um, you need to open a vote and or consensus and have it open for at least 72 hours because this allows time shifted input. So people that are in another time zone, people that are away for a weekend, have a chance to jump in and make a comment. Now, there are some exceptions for this. In particular, if there is an urgent security release, then we don't need to have 72 hours, right? Um, but whenever the project can, it really should be focusing on this because it allows everybody to participate. participate. Uh, so we don't really have deadlines in Apache projects. Um, we don't have any because we only have ones that we agree on together. Now, there are some projects that make a great use of making roadmaps and publishing those and, and discussing, right? That's the project's desire um, that they've agreed on, they've had consensus on to do together, which is great. But the only thing driving that, those deadlines for we want to have a release you know, next year, we want to have these features done next month, is that the people doing the work want to have those deadlines. So that's an important part of our decision making is um, it's often focused on letting the community uh, have this, they have their say. So let's see where we want to go next, because as I said, there are a lot of different places in the Apache way that might be interesting for your kind of project. Now, as I said, usually I make people choose things that we're going to do next, but I'm just going to be lazy here. And I'm probably going to go with community over code because that's the most, um, you know, that's our, our touch phrase of what Apache is all about. It's about community over code. So community. Uh, what do we mean by community here? Well, we don't live together. Um, we don't work together usually. We don't know each other except through the project. So that's an important thing to understand that uh, we need to focus on the entire project community and understand that it's not just those of us who we are working with on code or maybe working on our team together on this thing, it's every developer, it's every user, um, it's all the testers, people who submit bugs around the entire project space. So anyone who comes to an Apache project, whether it's email or Slack or whatever, and wants to interact, that's part of our community. And that's what's the important thing about most Apache projects. Um, a key early message was no jerks allowed. And yes, this was in an, an early Apache Way presentation. Uh, because we um, we value the community. Uh, there's no simpler way to say it. Value Communities value group contributions, not lone wolves. So we want the group to be successful. So people who can work within the group and help out the project as a whole, rather than just doing their own thing, they may be fast, but might not be exactly where the project wants to go. Um, another important thing is Apache is about long lived projects. So having a diverse community that welcomes different input is critical because that will draw in new people, right? New people will see, hey, somebody over there was welcome. Somebody from this company was welcomed. I could show up too. So an important uh, one, it's not really a rule, but it is obvious. Uh, BDFL, benevolent dictators for life, are not allowed in Apache PMCs. Every PMC is has a, a group membership that equals who run each project. So. Part of this lesson is really the immortal words of B Bill and Ted, be excellent to each other. Um, because remember, when everyone else in the project is a volunteer, being decent and being kind is a way to get them to respond to your messages. Otherwise, if you're being a jerk, why do I care to you know work on your bug? I'm going to work on something that interests me with people who are respectful of my time. Uh, so this is, I mean, this is a lesson a lot of projects are taking very seriously these days, but um, it's a particular question in, in Apache projects. We, we expect this. Uh, so community, wearing your hats is uh, sometimes a tricky metaphor. It's not a very good one for, especially for non-English speakers out there. Um, Apache does not allow direct corporate participation in projects. And you say, well, what about all these companies, people from IBM and Red Hat and Microsoft and Google who work on so-and-so project? Well, yes, Apache recognizes individual participation. So those, um, those people, those committers in our project, part of our community, may be working for some big company, but we expect that when they're at their Apache project in our spaces, 
that they will act in the best interests of the project, that they will be an Apache committer or an Apache PMC member when they're voting on a release, not just a Google employee or an Oracle employee. Yes, we do have some Oracle people at Apache. So a couple of side effects here that aren't obvious. If you have a corporate team and you're joining up with a project, each employee participates separately. I don't know that all these people who work for your company are together. I just see them as separate people. So you need to understand as a, as a manager, perhaps, that each employee will have a different path towards merit in a project, which is important to understand how to plan your work. The side effect for you as an employee is that your merit stays with you. Apache recognizes your contributions from you. We don't care who you work for or where you live. When you get merit in a project, that sticks with you, whether you change jobs or move or retire. Congratulations if you can. So this is another part of that is uh, how you act. Hopefully you're acting for the best interests of the project, but check your affiliation at the door, right? Don't be, You don't need to be obvious about where you work. You can certainly have it in your signature line. That's fine. Um, but we're not talking about a hierarchy in projects. Each project is one community that decides together. Every volunteer in a project has the same powers, whether they're a manager in real life or a technical um, expert or a fellow, or they're still in college and just learning JavaScript and doing their first project. We don't care what your day job role is. What we care about is how you interact with the project, what you can bring that the project will move the project forward. And a key part of um, community, obviously, at Apache is independent governance. So that's the part reason we have want to have separate um, diverse communities in terms of employment is because we are an independent home for projects, not beholden to any vendor or, or group of vendors even. Uh, a key way that this happens is organizationally. So. The ASF, the Apache Software Foundation, as a legal entity, owns all the trademarks of Apache projects on behalf of those projects. Um, that means the organization, including the board of Apache, are the ones who make final decisions on brands. Now, this never comes up in terms of a project decision, but it does help when the project needs to push back, shall we say, on some vendor who's trying to abuse their name. Um, the fact that Apache owns owns all of the brands is a key way that we can stay independent because that's really what attracts people to a project is the brand, the trademarks, you know, how you find out about a project. Um, PMCs themselves can own the brand, right? The messaging around it. How do they want to have a tagline? They design their own logos. That's great. Um, and they are expected to govern their community independently following these Apache way um, mores. So a key thing, a way, way to think about it is it's it's not a hierarchy. The only hierarchy is is someone on a PMC and they can vote on releases, or somebody committer and they do code, right? Um, that's the only difference. So if we will go forward, and we've covered decision making, of course, and we've covered community, um, where should we go next? Now that's a good question because. I'm not, I don't want to be obvious because that wouldn't be that wouldn't be fitting in a shame presentation about the Apache way. Let's skip over merit for now. And actually, let's talk about communication. Okay, we'll go forward to communication. So how do we communicate? How do we interact with each other when we're in Apache project spaces? Well, hopefully the first obvious answer is be kind. Um, everyone here is a human being. And just as important, I, I want to say more importantly, but as importantly, we're all here as a volunteer. So if you're being kind with your bug report or bringing in your brand new file system driver you want to contribute, um, and you're being thoughtful and welcoming when you, when you present it to a project, I'm going to listen because you're somebody I would want to listen to. And okay, I'll, I'll spend the time to work on the technical side. Um, if you're being a jerk, I'm a volunteer. I don't have time for that. Um, and that is a factor across almost all projects, right? Um, we don't have, we, we, we often do have serious disagreements, but we need to do them in a way that still maintains the kindness because that's part of your reputation around uh, the project. 
And, and of course, we're all um, on our own schedules. So uh, that's another way to be kind, makes people want to work in the project. So netiquette or ask smart questions. There are plenty of resources out there for asking smart questions. Um, reproducible bug reports with all the data in there. Clearly communicating what you want to do, why you want to do it, which at least some information, and how you know you want to add your new feature or how you think the next user conference should work. Um, asking smart questions means respecting the time of all the volunteers who are going to read your request. Um, this for large projects, this will be hundreds of people just on the developer list uh, who read the list regularly. So being smart about how you present your information, just like in a business context. Uh, but it's doubly important here because uh, everyone you're trying to engage to work with is a volunteer not beholden to your schedules. And of course, uh, in the modern language, modern day, we have a code of conduct. Uh, so the Apache Software Foundation has a policy, which is linked here in the slide. Uh, this applies to all spaces around the foundation, including this conference right now. Uh, the conference has additional codes as well. Um, and we expect that all projects will adhere to this and will um, keep their community spaces friendly and welcoming. And in the great, great, great majority of times, they do, which is great. Uh, but you do need to have a policy listed for when things don't always work. So this is a tricky one because it's this is more part of Apache, not necessarily any open source. The core development activity must be in English. Now, I know that sounds harsh to a lot of people who aren't native English speakers. Um, it's not that development can't be done that way. It's that translation software isn't, isn't social, right? We, we don't have magic translation, especially for nuanced things in where you want to plan your, to go ahead in your project. You want to add a new streaming module, um, right? But you're writing it in Chinese. I can't read Chinese, unfortunately, sorry. Um, which means the people who aren't speaking your language can't help participate in the work. Um, so English is, is uh, very widespread, um, and it is pretty widespread in the technical community. Um, but the part it pointed at Apache is we need our communities to be able to understand where the plans are going so they can evaluate things. And going one step further back, the board provides oversight to all communities, and the board reads quarterly reports. The board at the current time, we only have enough depth of understanding in English to be able to provide the expected oversight. So this is one of the things that um, is unfortunate about our model that we haven't scaled that yet. We're certainly working, thinking about it. Um, and it doesn't mean that you can't have your own natural language development lists, but the core planning activities and the PMC need to be able to communicate in English so that they can work with the rest of the Apache projects out there. So where should we go next? Um, well, we've covered community, open development, communications, decision-making. Oh, I guess it's time for, well, we should talk about being open because that really is what drives uh, all sorts of things um, in our projects. So let's go over to open development and uh, for those of you who are in a colder climb, we can wish we were someplace with warm breezes and few worries. Um, but this should be obvious that we do things openly. But why and, and what are the aspects of being open that are most important? Well, uh, yes, we use mailing lists. Um, there are many different interfaces. We have Pony Mail, which is the uh, list archive, which has super uh, searching and sorting and threading, but uh, most people really just use their email client, which allows asynchronous communication, of course, because we are a community that's dispersed in space. We're a community that's dispersed in abilities and expertise. So when, when you read the development plan, maybe you're an experienced developer, it takes you 10 minutes. When I read it, it might take me a couple of hours. I might not have time. I might be taking my daughter to the new music lesson, or I might have an emergency at home. And I still want to be able to participate in the work that our project's doing. Um, we may be dispersed in time zones and, and motivation. So it's important that we um, 
to do everything openly, right? So that everyone can see the information. Um, and it's important that we allow some time shifting. That's what the 72 hour rule is. For example, when we, we need to make a decision, well, we need to have at least 72 hours before we close the decision up so that people in other time zones uh, can understand it. Um, remember, we only know each other through the project and through the mailing lists really, or our code commits or bug reports, obviously. Um, but those are often reflected on mailing lists. So it's important to um, take the time and really allow email to work. Don't just treat it as Slack all the time. Which of course means that um, we archive everything, right? If it didn't happen on list, it didn't happen. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that phrase started at Apache uh, many years ago. Um, asynchronous lists provide time for feedback, critique, new ideas, others to show different work um, over time. And that means not just time today or this week, that means time next month or maybe time next year. There are, I can't count the number of times in projects and inside the foundation where we've said, we've had this serious question of how should we do this? And there are a lot of opinions and someone will come up and says, say, hey, we discussed this exact thing back then. Okay, good. but hey, here's the part of the email thread where we say why we made this decision. Having everything archived allows that um, communal understanding in the archives of how we got here and why we got here. And importantly, at Apache, everything is publicly archived permanently. We, we incredibly rarely um, edit the archives. Um, we do have a few private lists. Um, but you should only use those when you absolutely need to. You should not be defaulting to a private list just because something's embarrassing or you're not sure. It should be on a public list because that helps newcomers learn at any time. Especially the, in terms of a year from now, uh, we may know how we got someplace a year from now, but a newcomer showing up then won't know why we got there. And they have the chance, even without asking, if they want to search to understand how do we get there? Where has the project been? So that's a critical reason why we archive everything and we keep it forever, as far as, as long as we'll be around, certainly. So transparent decisions. It's I'm trying to figure out how the best way to describe this is. One is if you're coming from outside an Apache project, one thing to realize is that open source does not always mean open development. So the source in, in many projects on GitHub or in corporate open source projects, it's open source. But how they develop that, the process by which they add new things or accept bug reports is not open. It's not an open decision process. It's closed, either the, the original repo owner or the company, right? So what's important here is the, the community in an Apache project as a whole owns the project and manages this project. So when you come in, your motives aren't transparent to the community. Like if you're, working in a software development company, you're, you're used to being on a team where, you know, everyone in the team can understand where your company is going and what, what other teams are doing. Here, all of us at Apache are, you're just somebody working on a project. Um, you may have, your boss has deadlines. You may just be, you need a feature for some new release that you're doing on your private website. Those things, they're interesting to you and that's an important driver, but how does some decision, how does some change you wanna make Benefit the project. That's the trick, is explaining to the project of all of us um, what you want to do. So key ways to do this are telegraph your intent. So if you know you want to do something, send an email to Dev with your ideas ahead of time. Right, Give the community time to give feedback on that idea, saying maybe I'll say, hey, we already have a better streaming model. Have you seen X? Um, when you're drafting your design, put the rough draft out. Yes, it's not, it may not be pretty yet, but it allows the rest of the community to help refine the draft. So hopefully by the end, it'll be the project's plan for moving forward because everyone's participated. You've gotten better ideas. Um, and then the community has ownership going forward. And a key thing for coders is submitting your work in chunks. Don't wait three days until the entire thing is coded and tested and you've gone through the documentation. Submit your API draft, put that in. Um, submit, okay, here's my first step of just the file transport. Submit the next thing, because that allows feedback along the way. There are plenty of times where 
after the third module goes in, someone says, hey, these two APIs aren't consistent. Let's fix them now so that as we go forward, we don't have to do rework. Um, these are all things that when you're when you're fully open about each step of your process in development or testing or planning a new documentation site uh, allows the whole community to improve the work as it's happening. Uh, it takes a little extra work to start with when, when you're not used to it, if you're in a big company or if you've been used to working by yourself. Um, but there is a ton of benefit uh, both to you and to the project when you do where your work is this way at Apache. A key thing about open development is uh, this does really does fit with with this topic. Excuse me, is the pragmatic license. So um, Apache is often synonymous with our license, which is now Apache License Version 2.0. That's the, the name of it. The point of our license um, is maximum user freedom. So as opposed to, for example, copy left or GPL style licenses, which in, want to ensure that the code itself is free, we want to make sure that the uh, users of the code can do whatever they want with it, right? That's important because that will then attract more contributors back to the project. We have virtually no restrictions, as long as you're not going to sue us or use our trademarks, of course, um, for whatever kind of use you want, wherever you want. That allows um, people to come to Apache and contribute because they don't have to worry about what the contributor model is. We're very open about it, and it's, it's fully open, and it's maximum user freedom. And a, a side, it's not really a side effect, but a thing that people often don't think about is the reason people find Apache projects so appealing is trust in the ASF as a corporation. So behind all of our projects, we have the board and the ASF as an independent nonprofit charity that will ensure that we try and maintain our values here, that we will always have our servers running as long as we're around, um, that will continue to provide source code. So another benefit of Apache in particular, and, and most other open source foundations, is that when a project is no longer actively maintained, it doesn't just go away. It's not like some GitHub owner can delete their repo. At Apache, we keep the source code forever. So when projects don't have enough maintainers, people are still using it, but it's not being updated. We put our, our old code in the Apache attic, where we box it up, keep it safe, it's all read-only, Every mailing list archive, every, the whole website, every release we published are still there um, so that you know when you finally realize, hey, I actually am using this 20-year-old version of software. I need to fix it. We will always have that there for you. So that's another hidden benefit of foundations that I think a lot of people don't really think through in the larger uh, question. So we need to make one last decision of where what behaviors should we talk about next? Well, we'll play the game seeing of uh, who remembers what things we've talked about and figure out which thing, obviously, we're going to go to next. And congratulations to whoever figured that one out, because obviously, it would be merit. Ah, I could really use a drink about now. Something nice and cool and pineapple-y. Oh, look, there's a pineapple. Uh, merit is... We often use the word meritocracy, but that's that's a bad, it's often not understood the same way elsewhere. So we should avoid that probably. I shouldn't have said it. Merit is what you have actually done. So your merit in in, in our context is the, is the value you've brought to a project, the contributions you've made, the smart bug reports you've added, the documentation you've written that helps people out. Um, that's as defined in the context of that project, not, not outside the project, in the project, by the project community. So an important thing here is every project has their own merit structure. So Apache has over 200 completely separate projects um, that do their own things that, you know, what's important to one project may not be important to another one, another project. Um, the good thing about merit is uh, it doesn't expire typically. So once you've gained a committer bit, for example, on one project, then we won't take that away from you unless you do something really wrong. Um, the key part is that stays with you through your job, through your careers. So there are plenty of people who have uh, moved on in different jobs, moved to different technologies, 
but still come back and for whatever reason, because they use the project um, or because it turns out their new company needs it, are still committers on Apache projects years later and still come back and continue, continue to do great work. Um, so the way to think of it is when we talk about merit, if you don't, don't quite get what it is, you gain merit within that project by doing things that community values, things that that community thinks are useful. Um, and then that is shown by the growth. The more you do that we value, the more pow power you may be granted to take actions. So obviously every user is welcome to, to browse everything to write up to our mailing lists. Every contributor, thank you. Thank you for contributing, whatever it was. Um, the real step here is committer. So contributors to different projects at Apache can eventually be voted in as a committer on that project. Um, that allows you to, uh, excuse me, that allows you to submit code to the project um, directly into the rep repository. So you have write access, that, so to speak. Um, the next step there is um, being voted in, in as a PMC member. So in a lot of cases, it doesn't matter if you're a PMC member or committer, everybody's working on the code. The one difference is that PMC members have binding votes on making releases. So when we make a formal, formal release of an Apache software project, um, the PMC voting on it formally makes it a release of the foundation as an organization. So it's not the release manager who's doing it. It's the foundation who's doing it. And that helps with our legal shield, of course. Uh, the other thing that PMC members can do is vote in new committers or propose new committers uh, or propose new PMC members, excuse me. There's another step above that, not really above that to the side, which is a PMC chair. So the chair isn't really anything special on the PMC. They are, however, the liaison between that project and the board of Apache. So every project at Apache reports on a quarterly basis to the board, letting us know how they're doing, what releases they've made, any issues they have that they might need help on. Um, the PMC chair is a vice president of the project uh, which is a title, but that is the main job is to talk to the board. Another level here in the in growth of merit is uh, Apache Software Foundation member. So members of the foundation are separate. They are effectively legally shareholders of the organization itself. Um, they don't really, if you if you look here, they're not in bold. They don't Apache members don't have any additional permissions on projects, right? They show up in a project, they're just another committer or another contributor, excuse me. Um, they do have some visibility into the rest of the foundation, how the foundation works, but it's not a technical one, it's an organizational one. And of course, the the top of what we call a growth chart, I suppose, is a director, a director of the foundation who are just like in any other corporation, they're on the board of directors and uh, set strategy and, and appoint officers, things like that. But again, this is things that you've done that are valued that will get you recognized. And it's permissions to do things. It's not authority. So anybody who's coming from a big company background, uh, often you think, oh, well, who's the manager on this project? We don't have managers on projects. Now, the PMC are leaders because they have a final say on some things, but it's not really a hierarchy still. Every project is still essentially a, a flat two level layer of PMC members and committers. Um, so it's important to think of merit, it, it gets you privileges, it gets you the privilege to, to commit code or to vote on new committers. Um, but merit does not buy you authority. The community must still agree. You still don't get to make unilateral decisions and you still don't necessarily um, have more of a decision power than someone else in the project. Every PMC member gets one vote like everyone else. So one, um, one problem area in the past has been umbrella projects. So an important thing if you're thinking about the way, the way all the organization behind this works is Apache Jakarta long ago um, was an umbrella project which had many, many different Java bits in it, each with different community, uh, different components, but also with different communities. And they worked in different areas. Some of them had different technologies and there was no way that the Apache Jakarta PMC, which was over 200 people, I think, could, could understand the changes being made in all the different areas. Um, 
that's a problem from, from our organizational point of view because then the PMC can't really give a good re report on what's happening everywhere. So a key thing in Apache is we try to keep projects scoped to somewhere that anyone in the PMC can have a basic understanding of the rest of where, how the project is working. Um, because that way we have more people who can, can comment, help, hey, so-and-so is ready for being a committer, or yes, that's a great idea. We should do that, but we need to change this part. Um, so if we go on to take a different way, um, we can see that we are actually at the end. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone for attending um, and say, of course, uh, as a place that values community over code and is uh, open source, of course, the Apache way needs your input. So are there ways that we can explain these concepts better? Please let me know. Uh, these slides, of course, are licensed under the Apache license on my website. And of course, the apache.org website has an entire section on the Apache way, um, which has different explanations that sort of show how things work directly in Apache projects. And that is about all that I have for the talk. And let's see what questions we might have in the couple of, less, couple of minutes left that we have. Unfortunately, I missed the first two colors, okay. Uh, great, I see that people have been able to hear me while, while I've been talking. Um, are there any other questions? Um, or uh, should I, oh, I wish I put pictures of my cats in this. That would have been the perfect ending, a perfect ending to a talk. Okay, good, thank you, Paolo. Um, and again, this is just, these slides, which are posted on my website, are only one way to think about the Apache way. What I've focused on here are the behaviors that are important, the way you would act in a community, um, and a little bit of, of the why. There are at least three or four other current Apache way talks, two of them were given yesterday, um, that talk about very specific aspects or the ways that communities, our, our PMCs, should think about working with people. So there are a lot of different ways to work on this. And sometimes, you know, we have different, di some projects have different ideas. And that's actually a fine thing, right? Um, there are times where projects come to the board and say, hey, we know that the PMC guidelines say X, but our project has been doing Y for a while, and it works a lot better for us. Um, and when projects can show us how that encourages collaboration, how that brings in new contributors, then the board is happy to say, oh, that's a great idea. That's okay for your project. Why don't you write it up and see if that can help somebody else? So there's a lot of improvement to be done and a lot of new ideas that we are looking forward to hearing from, from everyone. So is that it? Am I still on? Tap, 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 tap. Uh, I see a couple of comments in the there, which are thank you. And we have been recording. So obviously all uh, talks will be available on the Apache Foundation YouTube channel in about a week once our volunteers actually can go and put them up there and do all the bits that are necessary. And we hope to see you on the internets and hope to see people's suggestions for how to make this stuff easier to use. Because as I've said, we want to find new contributors. We want to make it easy for new people to contribute both to our code and to our projects and to our to our way. Um, that's why it's all out there, all open sourced. So that is it for me. And I will let our um, stalwart conference organizers, Rich and Brian and Sharon and everyone else uh, get forward to the next talk. Thanks a lot for everybody who came and uh, I'll look for you out in the internets. <laughs>